Hello, Peter here. In this episode, we are going to wrap up our work on the blob shadow component. We only need to implement the other mode of operation for the blob shadow, and that is having the shadow not at a fixed local z, but at a variable local z with a maximum distance. This means projecting the shadow downward on the ground if the ground is closer than the maximum distance. This might sound a bit abstract, but once you see it, you will know its usefulness. So let's start. Okay, let's open our blob shadow component. So this is what we did in the last episode. We need to create two new variables. One of them is called use trace. That is a boolean, so it can be like this. Make it public. And let's try to put it behind fixed local z. Right. Then we add another one, and this one is called trace length. And this one we need to change the type of because it's a float. And let's move it behind use trace. Make it public as well. Quickly compile the blueprint so that we can set the default values. Trace length, I would say put it at 200, which is about, no, it's 200 centimeters in, in Unreal, so 2 meters seems like reasonable. The use trace we can leave unchecked, so the default will be not to use trace. Okay. We need to break the link here. and instead drag out our use trace because that is a decision and we make the branch for that now if the use trace is false we are going to do exactly what we were doing in the previous episode so let's, now let's make a bit of space uh, this one and this one just move it out of the way a bit so that we can select all that and move it down a bit just out of the way then we can take this and make it nice right so what are we going to do we want the shadow to project downwards at a certain maximum distance. So to find if there is anything in between the maximum distance and our object, we need to do a trace. So let's drag out this one and say line trace and we, we select line trace by channel. Yeah, well, we need some space. We can arrange it later to look sort of nice, but just like that. All right, a trace usually has a start and an end. The start is, of course, the, the location of the object. So we need to get from components the primitive component here and get world location. Now we want this trace to be straight down, so in the direction of the z-axis. And the length of the trace is the trace length. So let's get that one out. And let's make a vector. And we can leave everything at zero and we set the trace length as the z-component. Now, obviously, we need to subtract these two. And this is the end of the trace. So it will trace with a maximum trace length. So we can set this as the end of the trace. 
we can use the location as the start of the trace. Now the trace channel is visibility, that's okay. Ignore self, that is also okay. But we also need to ignore uh, the owner. So let's get the owner. And it is an array, so we need to make an array. And we hook up that one. We can, just to make things uh, a bit more visible in the beginning, say the draw debug for one frame. So yeah, that's our trace setup. And we will get a return value here, true if, it was a, if there was a hit. Let's split the struct bin so that we get all these things out. So what do we need to do? We need to, based on there was a hit or not, take one or the other uh, location. So this is the return value and let's select and let's select a vector. Well, if there was a hit we are going to use hit location. So if there wasn't a hit we can use the trace end. So the output of this will be either the location of the hit or the trace end. The trace end was of course uh, the world location subtracted with the trace length. So what do we do with this? Well we need to set the world location set world location and we set this as new location but the target is our shadow container mesh component so let's drag that one out get it like that let's see what we have yeah that looks good that will put the shadow there then we just, as with the, with the other option, we now need to test if we want to rotate with the object. Uh, we can get that one. And dependent on that one, so branch with the rotate with object as the condition. If that is true, we do an update shadow for rotation. So that is all the logic we need for that one. Make sure that ignore self is checked and we ignore those ones. Cool. Now let's make this look slightly better. It's, we can select everything here and just move it down a bit then we can take this again and move this more up so this looks a bit more okay oh, that's looking good okay compile this seems to compile all right save it and close So let's see uh, if what we have just done actually works. Uh, to test these kind of things, I usually use my little hover component. And uh, I'm going to do that now as well. Uh, you can use other things that you like uh, 
<laughs> to get a floating object. But I have in my content components here a hover component. And I'm going to add that one to my sphere. And what that does is set a hover height. It has thrust and linear damping and angular damping and so on. So let's make the hover height 200. And simply save that. Uh, let's go into our blob shadow. And if all is well, we now have the new parameters here. We have the use trace and the default 200 there. So we only have to click on use trace. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't even see the shadow because we had a fixed local Z of minus 50 and that is just immediately under the, the ball. So if it was at 200, we wouldn't even see a shadow. But now we're going to use the trace and the trace length is 200. That should be just sufficient for this. Save that level and see how this looks. Well, indeed, our ball is floating now at 200. We see the red line here. That is the trace debug. And it will follow the ground. So, yeah. We will see if we go up on the stairs. You see, it will just follow. Okay. Well, this still we could have done with the fixed uh, uh, local Z, of course, because there was no movement of the sphere. Oh, and there was no um, hugely varying terrain either, except then for the stairs, but the, the, the hover component makes it hover even at the stairs at two meters above it. So let's really make this hover unstable in my case then um, uh, easy way to do that is to set a linear damping of 0.04 so there will be no damping so it will start moving about a bit more let's see what that does and play well we see our ball is bouncing about but you see it gets past the height it gets higher and higher to a certain limit and you see the the shadow <clears throat> reacts on the same way as when it was fixed that it becomes smaller at the end you even see if you close look very closely that on the red line of the trace there is just a little bit of black when it's loose from the ground that little bit of black is the six units, the six centimeters, that was the cutoff Z, because the radius was 50 in the Z direction of the shadow, but we had a cutoff Z at 56. So you see this little black thing on the end of it. But yeah, this does exactly what we want it to do. And we can play with that ball and move it everywhere. So yeah, this is great. So you can see how you can use this. This is nice for flying objects or, 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 yeah. or even fixed objects that you want to uh, give a shadow that is where you don't know really how far it is to the ground. So of course the trace length you can vary from, uh, you, you can make it very high or very, very short, but you understand how you can use this. Well, that is the blob shadow component done. Just remove the uh, debug from the trace and uh, this is ready. The component is ready for your real projects. You see, it takes some time to make it into an easy to use component, but uh, it is time well spent, I think, uh, if you need these kind of things in your 
for old style shadows or, or especially mobile projects. We have only just begun uh, where the SDL tutorial is concerned because in the next episode I will start with the SDL component. The SDL component will enable dynamic objects to receive light from multiple static light sources that, that are in the scene. Because on mobile projects you would typically have only static lights and all the light is baked, but you still want your object to react on, 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 on these static lights. But for now, I will leave you with a few shots on how this level runs on my old Asus tablet. Because it's easy to say mobile projects, but the proof is in the pudding. Thank you for watching the Blob Shadow tutorial, and I hope you will also join me for the other chapters of the SDL tutorial series. Bye bye! Hello, Peter here again. Just wanted to say thanks for watching this video. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Below there are links to other episodes in the series and don't forget to subscribe so you are the first to know when the next episode is up. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!